I did a very non scientific test a while ago on cycling aquariums. Oh yes. Lined, lined up a whole bunch of aquariums, tried mm -hmm. three or four different methods. Um, stability was one of them. Throughout the, the test process, there was always a number, an amount of ammonia and nitrite throughout the water, and it mm -hmm. fluctuated quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't read the instructions properly, as it said, to add prime to it. I was naturally assuming prime was just to dechlorinate the water as opposed to help with the cycling process. Okay. How, do those, how do those two products work together for cycling an aquarium? Quite hand in hand, of course. You know, where... Um... Whereas prime detoxifies or, uh, chlorine mm -hmm. and chloramine. And then when chemically, when you detoxify chloramine, you have an exposed nitrogen at three hydrogens attached to immediately and ammonia is created. And if you have high chloramine levels, you could have an issue. So prime will detoxify that ammonia that's created by detoxifying the chloramine or breaking down, reducing that chloramine. Um, Prime will detoxify ammonia to over 48 hours in a toxic situation. So if you have a spike, it's going to hold it in a non-toxic form. It binds it to aminium salt, basically. And that is a non-toxic form. It will be still present on a traditional ammonia kit, but it's in a form that's non-toxic. And then if you have a functioning cycle or bacteria, that bacteria is fully accessible to that bound ammonia and it can convert it and it'll be when the bond breaks away in 48 hours there's no ammonia to return into the water and then prime works in a similar fashion on detoxifying nitrite and nitrate uh, prime removes heavy metals and there's no slime in the bottle there's actually an agent that gently encourages the fish to produce their mucus layer naturally so the mucus layer or slime coat that a fish produces naturally Physiologically and biologically is the most effective for mitigation of stress and disease resistance. Um, so that's the features. And then where stability comes in, there's several strains of bacteria that are aerobic and anaerobic. So nitrifying, denitrifying. Mm -hmm. These are going to, once you get some type of food source into that water, be it an ammonia or some fish wastes, and you're going to hear 10 different opinions, all gospel, the 10 different people on what method they use. Do they use a little bit of fish or do they use ammonia or is this guy, what's this guy doing? Or is he getting some rock, putting it in? Um, but you got to get something, you got to get food in there for that bacteria. So I always use just a few fish, a few mollies, platy, swords. Of course, you always hear the thing in salt water, a few damsels, damsels, but, uh, just don't put the rock in yet and never get them out. <laughs> but what the uh, what's amazing feature about stability is these strains of bacteria are so adaptive. You essentially, if you're setting yourself or your customer up with the correct amount of biomedia for that aquarium, matrix being the Seachem's biomedia, um, and the correct size filter, correct size flow rate, and of course, very, very disciplined and minimal feeding for the first week or so, just tiny amounts of food. Um, stability actually cuts off that top portion or that top end of that spike, toxic spike of the ammonia, the nitrite, nitrate. It actually cuts that off when those other factors are dressed correctly and you can get a very smooth, non-eventful cycle. I just set up another Malawi tank, 36 gallon tank uh, a couple months ago, and I got it up and going. I uh, put my title power filter on there. Got a good deal on it, by the way, the title. Power <laughs> Funny that. Yeah, really good deal. <laughs> and uh, got my correct amount of matrix in there and uh, literally got dosed up with some stability literally went to my lfs and i got three electric blue john eyes and three bumblebee cichlids i think lapralogus give me on that um and got them in there and, and that's within within two hours and uh and 
didn't feed them that night. Of course, the next morning, literally something that worked out to be about two or three flakes per fish, something very minimal. And not once did I have any clouding issues, no ammonia sp spike, no nitrite spike, nothing. So and you, you'll get a hundred different opinions again on the cycling process, but mine just comes down to correct filtration equipment, correct biomedia amounts, um, very common sense, small quantity of fish, hardier species, maybe every, not people, a lot of people want to do cichlid, but, uh, um, and stability is advanced enough to where you're going to knock off those toxic spikes. Now there's always somebody that can, can torpedo anything. Oh, I put 15 fish in there and I dumped in a half jar of food. I didn't, Oh, I didn't, I put some bio balls in there. I didn't have anything really good surface area. Then you could have tragedies no matter what product you're using. But uh, stability is quite flexible, quite amazing. Try not to sound like a commercial for stability, but two thumbs up. <laughs> so, so what I'm hearing from that is that for stability to work to its full ability, it needs to be used for prime and a large amount of biological filtration. Not a large amount, but the adequate amount is direct. Okay. Like yep. on our, like our website, our products, or any products, uh, will have a recommended amount or quantity volume per gallon or literage. Make sure there's an adequate biomedia, preferably a better class of biomedia, like matrix is really good. So there's a lot of ceramic rings, things that have good macro porosity. So. And then because it's essentially doing a fish in cycle, the prime needs to be used to detoxify anything. Initially, the initial yep. water supply. The yeah. stability then comes over top with the bacteria yeah. and the yeah. feeding of dead fish to then colonize it. So is that about correct? Correct. correct. And the stability is doing its job right away. So you don't really need to be using any further uh, daily dosing of prime unless you run into an uh, unintended ammonia spike. Or if you're doing another water change and introducing some untreated water, then you treat the volume of water being changed. But uh, yeah, I my initial water supply, my initial quantity, I dosed up with prime. And then uh, next day, I in the evening after work was done, I hit it with a shot of stability and I poured it in my tidal filter. Mm -hmm. And then uh, went off to the store and got my fish, came back within an hour and uh, got it going. And then stability, there's a daily dose for the first seven days. Then after mm -hmm. that, like a, a weekly or a monthly dose. And mm -hmm. just as long as you're set up with the discipline on the minimal minimal feeding, just a small quantity of fish, correct recommended amount of biomedia, um, you're going to set yourself up for really good success. Um, stability is quite amazing on, again, uh, preventing those toxic spikes of ammonia nitrite nitrite that you get with a lot of older types of strains of bacteria. But they'll still be showing on tests, but by yeah. using the prime, they become not toxic. Correct. Well, so people, if people, to detoxify, you're not going, you, you, you could get a false reading if there's ammonia, but generally yeah. ammonia spike, the uh, stability is going to cure it anyway. And if yeah. stability cures an ammonia spike, that will bring down that ammonia level and you'll be getting a correct result on a kit. So that makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm just working through a few different scenarios when I've had oh, yeah. people in the shop or people online. And so from that, I'm kind of working on people have put too many fish in to start with or feed too nice. many, which is probably quite common for people that are new to the hobby. That's what's I love the fish feed too much. Or... Uh, because they're still using Prime, the readings that are coming through are not toxic per se, but begin to freak oh, out because they're showing stuff in right. the water. Yeah, then in that case, if they're not, they're, they're pushing the limits, too many fish, not enough biomedia or, or just feeding too much. Um, it, anybody can pour enough gasoline on a fire to get it get into a bonfire. So, <laughs> um, if you're overcoming stability's capability, which is difficult, you, and it can be done though, if you're overfeeding and too many fish, inadequate filtration, 
that's where prime will come in to detoxify that ammonia spike nitrite nitrate spike um, and the way prime again detoxifies that ammonia you will get a false reading any total ammonia kit on the market essentially is, is not uh, desirable because the free ammonia does 99 percent of the killing essentially mm -hmm. Over time, if you have elevated total ammonia, you'll get fish stress and death. But free ammonia has already killed the fish 99% of the time before total will. And everyone's selling you a total ammonia kit. So that's not what we want to know. We want to know the free ammonia and how it exists in the aquarium. So a lot of the total ammonia kits that are available to us as hobbyists will say, hey, this does a total ammonia and an extra step you can test for free ammonia well there's a problem with that because if you test the ph of those reagents in that kit it's very very elevated and as we know the higher you go up in elevation and ph you get an exponential increase in that pa uh your P, uh, ammonia mm -hmm. so it gives you it's going to show you a crazy reading wow like a very high reading when actually it's bound to a non-toxic form to a aluminium salt and it's being consumed by your bacteria out of that bond so uh, those kits will give a, a false false alarm so that's why i'll segue to the ammonia alert that we produce a little sensor that suction cups on the inside of the aquarium mm -hmm. the ammonia alert is a membranic sensor will actually detect free ammonia at the level of how it actually truly exists in your water column. That's what's critical about the ammonia alert, not just a cute little gadget on your aquarium, but using an ammonia alert is the only true way to determine if your water conditioner that claims to detoxify ammonia is doing the job. So that would be why at least in New Zealand, there's a bit of a hoo-ha about those alerts tags okay not not working so that would be when people pull out their liquid test kit and it's showing ammonia but the alert's not because it's testing two different forms right. of ammonia the have a super high ph on on that free ammonia kit that they're using so it gives you a false reading not actually how that that free ammonia exists in your aquarium and many many times throughout the years um if the ammonia alert wasn't explained correctly um Ammonia alert, you're not going to sell it to a discus keeper. You're not going to sell it to somebody who has, we like to say, 7.0 and below. Or even, even if it's 7.2 or under. Because in chemistry, um, every reading you go lower from neutral, 6.9, 6.8, 6.7, Actually, every point below 7.0, ammonia is converted to ammonium. Mm -hmm. Ammonium is non-toxic to fish. It's mm -hmm. bound ammonium. So low pH um, aquaria, ammonia is not a killer. It's not an issue. Now, you might have an aquarium that's 6.8, 6, 6 9, and you do a water change and put some rock in there, and then it pushes it up over to... 7.2 or 7.3 for whatever reason, that could unbind ammonia, and then you have an issue. So what happens is sometimes we might have had a, a discus keeper or a, someone keeping a, an aquarium in the, the low acidic range. They buy the ammonia alert, put it on their aquarium, and go, hmm, you know, it's been six months, and that's just, it's never gone off. It's never changed color. I wonder if it's even working. So they dust off their old total ammonia kit, do a test, and it gives them the most tragic reading because it unbinds ammon ammonium, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the customer might feel, oh, my gosh, I had a toxic situation in the tank, and the ammonia alert never worked. Well, chemically, not sales jargon, chemically, physiologically, it's not, or physically, it's not going to register. That's my babbling answer there. Of course, our chemists and our biologists here can be more succinct with their yeah. answers, but I'm more the guy in the shop aisle kind of way I talk, you know. And, uh, so. and, and that's good, fantastic because most people understand that logic more than this chemical to this chemical to this iron. But yeah. I, I found that, that 
but they are very fascinating and very interesting oh, and excellent. it's opened up my mind somewhat as well which i think is fantastic sure um and i hope that the people are watching have also gone oh wow yeah. okay that, there you go uh, a couple yeah. of comments um one from helen which i think explains it quite well as well is that she's saying I'm hearing that stability in Prime probably doesn't cycle the tank any faster, but enables fish to safely live in a new setup earlier than would be recommended. Absolutely. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, like yeah it. I, I, I saw that and I thought that that sums it up quite nicely. I thought Perfect that. summary, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Rebecca's got a, a question here regarding Prime. Is it correct that Prime reduces oxygen saturation while removing chlorine and chloramines, or is it is this only in the presence of nitrite and nitrate? Actually, all in general, Prime is a reducing agent by its function chemically. So, if you were to massively overdo, overdose Prime, and there's a huge, huge range of safety built into our dosing regimen instructions, but if you were to massively overdose Prime, you could run into a scenario where you do lower oxygen saturation in the water and could cause a stress or harm to the fish. But that's at a level that's almost ridiculous of overdosing. You'd really have to want to kill your fish, like dose a huge amount in a small aquarium. <laughs> yeah. So we're basically talking a whole bottle into like a 20 gallon or like a 500 ml tank, sort of smaller than that. Gallon. Yeah, but the safe answer there, used as directed, 100% non-toxic. Prime's non-toxic by nature. It's not. There's. It's non-toxic, but it, the way it works as a reducing agent, yeah, it will lower oxygen saturation if massively overdosed, overdosed in a small aquarium. So a lot of recommendations. Uh, you've got ammonia or nitrite in your tank. Double dose prime at least down here in New Zealand, that's a very common uh, theme or a common response to people. Double dosing isn't going to be too high of a dose to cause the oxygen much. saturation. Not so even. we're really, really talking big amounts. Yeah, ridiculous amounts. But for us to be safe as a company, and you just say use as directed, you're fine. Yeah. But everyone knows pretty much the safety and efficacy of Prime. So, cool. yeah. Um, this will be the last couple of questions on sure, no problem. Problem. the joint of pleasure. I'm honored to be, be here. <laughs> uh, so a few months back, we had, uh, Mark Goodwin on with us. He's one of your ambassadors and we were discussing, uh, Mark Goodwin. Yes, Mark. Yep. What a wonderful yep, person. Lovely man. Oh, uh, we were discussing the differences in Flourish and Flourish XL and mm -hmm. he gave us his thoughts and on that. Can sure. you, because that's often very, very commonly confuse the two different products. Right. Can okay. you please explain the differences between Flourish, Flourish Excel and the uses for them? Sure. Okay. Flourish would be what we call as our comprehensive supplement. You heard a lot of buzz about all-in-ones on the market. Well, you can never make like, so to speak, an all-in-one that's going to, you can line up 100 aquariums with different species and different species load. Um, different hobbyist habits and to have a fixed ratio all in one is hard to get applicable to any one. So the way Seachem works is we give hobbyists the option. We'll have a Flourish, we'll have our Flourish Excel, which is our carbon. We have a potassium. Um, we have nitrogen and phosphorus for closed systems that maybe don't have fish using our own water. Um, so it's all about a building. We never tell anybody they need all of our products for success, but we give options for needed scenarios. And beginning would be good lighting, good substrate or a soil, and flourish. Flourish with the comprehensive supplements, vitamins, amino acids, trace elements, um, everything for plant growth and development. Then, and also, and, and also there's iron and flourish and very interestingly interestingly we were the first if if not the first one of very few but i believe the first to pioneer the research and development of an iron supplement that uses ferrous ferrous iron in the two plus oxidation state and ferrous iron can be uptaken by stem leaf or roots at any ph 
very easily because we bind it to a, it's a ferrous gluconate, a gluconate being a carbohydrate, not a sugar, but a carbohydrate that's an energy cell for the plant, plant cell, or it's an energy source for the plant cell. But gluconate does a beautiful job of keeping that iron in the water column with no other exit until the plant wants to uptake it. And being bound to the gluconate makes it very easy to transfer through the cell wall. And with that energy, um, it makes a uh, very low energy uptake, required uptake for the plant. And what the plant does when they save energy is channel that to growth. Um, and where I'm getting at is most products 40 years ago, 50 years ago, and today most products are selling our, our hobbyists a ferric iron a chelated iron, or some of the buzzwords would be EDTA, you'll see on the label. Um, there's evidence that some amounts of light energy can uh, break the chelate on that and the plant can take it in. But in the ferric form, the ferric form can only be uptaken by the plant roots and the root zone. And then the plant needs to combine energy and adenosine triphosphate or ATP in this process to convert it down to two plus oxidation state, then it can use it. So it's going around the moon and back using a lot of energy just to take in the roots. And the dirty little secret here that a lot of people are maybe even beginners in the hobbyists don't know is iron is immobile in the structure of a plant, a foliar feeding aquatic plant. A plant cannot transport iron from its roots to its stem or from the leaves to the stem or the stem to the leaves, stem to the root. Wherever it takes it in is where it utilizes it. So lots of extensive study at CCAM, understanding the biology of the aquatic plant, the foliar feeding plant. Let's use a ferrous form. Wow, that's what it uses in wild. It can uptake it with almost no energy required and stem leaf or root, and it makes a big difference. Um, a lot of these ferric sources of iron on the, on the market, the EDTA, the three plus forms, they're byproducts of the garden plant industry for plant, terrestrial plants, plants that grow in soil. Um, and years and years and years ago, we knew these plants, that's all we had to do a little bit of good for our, our aquatic planted tank. Um, but we move on from that. We're always researching. We're moving forward, learning better. You know, we don't want to stay stagnant, no pun intended. But uh, um, so everything we do on the flourish range is rooted in the biology of the aquatic plant. And I think we were one of the first manufacturers in the world to produce a range that wasn't just byproducts from the uh, garden plant industry. So Flourish will be your main comprehensive. Then what Flourish Excel is, and this is a fun little story as well. Flourish Excel is our bioavailable source of carbon in a liquid bottle. Mm -hmm. And why we researched and developed that years ago, and we were the first to pioneer research and develop a liquid carbon um, on the market. If you can believe that. Uh, now, there's been a lot of other companies over the years starting to produce versions thereof, uh, but ours has extensive amount of research on the maximum percentage of safety and efficacy on active ingredients and stabilizing that in the bottle and in the aquarium. But why we, why we produced it to begin with is I'll even go back to my shop days or just in the shop environment, a customer comes in and they're they're uh, dyed in the wool guppy hobbyists or grommies or in the fish. And week after week, they come in and they see these beautiful plant setups. And they start thinking, you know, wow, mm, Cameron, that looked great in my, my living room. I want to do one of those. Okay, so the us at the shop or the whoever's there go, okay, here's your here's your lights, here's your gravel. Okay, do, 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 do. oh, here's your CO2 injector. How much is that? <laughs> Usually the, the process is, uh, well, they're expensive. No matter what country in the world are, CO2 injectors are a little cost, costly. There's some cheaper ones that have come along in the market over the years. But overall, that's another investment. And I think even more importantly, someone new to the aquatic plant keeping um, they haven't gained the experience yet to monitor and regulate a CO2 injector correctly. So what happens many times, you have a scenario, the customer goes home all excited, 
and they nuke their tank with their injector and then oh, this is not fun and they may or may not have got good advice from the shop on how you know to modern regulate or it was too expensive so that poof, closes the door on most of these new budding plant hobbyists mm, they go back to the karamis go back to the guppies or we don't want to lose that opportunity so we develop flourish to be a stand-in source of bioavailable carbon um, and even most low energy environments today uh, you wonderful beautiful results long term high energy environments uh, you can also add co2 injector with it to augment it but it opens the door and allows you to have great success a flourishing aquarium and get really hooked into the hobby and see see some joy from it and then you can use flourish excel in conjunction with a co2 injector for augmentative benefit as well but all of us will know a co2 injector in the hands of an experienced knowledgeable hobbyist will get the greatest success but uh flourish excel is the gateway it's the gateway drug the hobby man <laughs> Sorry, um, there's, there's a lot of people potentially down here potentially worldwide i, I can only really talk of, from new zealand's point of view sure that basically just say that excel is an algicide and all it all it's basically doing is keeping algae away so the plants can grow mm. uh can you talk to that a little bit and, and how has sure. that sort of um, begun happening for excel is not an algicide was not formulated to be an algicide but many people around the world have seen claim that using excel will kill that beard algae their claims made by many people in the hobbies throughout the throughout the years. Um, that's where we'll leave it. It's not an algicide; wasn't intended for that. It's intended to be a bioavailable source of liquid carbon. Um, cool. Um, we've got two more comments just up here. Uh, cool. Rebecca asked again. Yeah. Uh, another question. Uh, good to know regarding the prime and the oxygen, and should assume that the time scale for the reduction is not going to be long, and it wouldn't bioaccumulate in the aquarium even with water changes. Correct. It breaks down over time. Right? Yeah. Cool. And Zen has asked about uh, the ammonia alerts and does something like CO to affect it. If she noticed that the pH alert stops changing after about three months, and she has to replace it. Correct. Okay, pH alert, yeah. Depending on the amount of uh, salts and organics in the aquarium, pH alert can last anywhere from three to six months. Um, where ammonia alert will last well over a year, we, but we place one year on the package. Um, far as CO2 affecting the sensor, no. Varying levels, no. Awesome, thank you for that.